my grandma, my mom's mom, came from a good farming family. They had a farm on the far east side, way out in the country, on the east side of Detroit, somewhere around between eight and nine miles. Yeah, it's all country back then, and like any good family, good farm family, they had lots of kids. My grandma had 11 siblings altogether, and as a result, my mom grew up with lots of cousins. I'd like to tell you how many they were, but I'm not sure, and unfortunately, there's no one left to tell me. But it was somewhere between 25 and 30, you know, and these cousins got together on a regular basis. It, it started during World War II when fellows were drafted and the family would gather and they would go and they would see them off with a party. And well, then they would come home on a leave and then when the war was over, the cousins continued to get together on a regular basis. In fact, that continued through the 50s into the early 60s. Cousins' parties were rather legendary in my family. And little ears heard lots of stories. I'm not going to tell you the stories. In any case, the reason I mention that is because this last Wednesday, the last of my mother's first cousins was buried. And even though I, I didn't do the funeral, I just didn't trust myself in having enough energy for that, I did the homily. And one of the things that I talked about was my cousin, Nancy, was an interesting person. She, well, she was always at those family gatherings in the center of everybody. And like her father, she was a great storyteller. The thing that I always loved about Nancy is that as she would tell a story that she thought was funny, she would start laughing. Well, Nancy had one of those laughs that you never forget. You always know she's around when you would hear her that laugh. I don't know where that comes from, but <laughs> yeah. But in any case, that was very true of her. And oftentimes you would laugh even though you wouldn't necessarily even hear the punchline because she was laughing, and it was so funny just hearing her laugh. You would think that Nancy was a person who just had an easy life, and yet that wasn't true. It wasn't true at all. When she married her high school sweetheart, Joe, it was only after years of trying they discovered they weren't able to have children. And so they finally were able to adopt two, which brought great joy to them. But along the way, as their son grew into adolescence, he also developed a great despair. He suffered from depression. And despite all of their efforts, they were never able to help him overcome that. He made the best of his life and was there when Joe died. In fact, Nancy was one of the first of her cousins to be widowed. Spent the last third of her life without Joe, the love of her life. And then after that, her son took his own life. And she watched as her brothers died and all of her cousins, and she was the last. She knew a lot of sorrow in her life. And yet, you would never know that. Even a couple of months ago when her sister-in-law died, I went to the funeral and had a chance to spend some time with Nancy. And there was the laugh and the largest smile you'd ever see. And there was just a joy about her always. You would think she never suffered at all in her and yet, nothing could be further than the truth. When she died last week, her daughter, Kathy, my second cousin, 
went through the things that her mom had and found this note. And it, when I, she gave it to me before the funeral, really struck me. And I, I read it as part of the homily that day. And I want to use it again today. Because I think it encapsulates part of the message of what we celebrate this Easter. It just simply says at the top, random thoughts when death is near. She wrote in a shaky hand, which tells me that it was near the end of her life. She wrote, surprise, there is something left when there is no more hope. Acceptance. Believe me, acceptance has a kind of joy in it. And yes, from there it's not all that far to celebration. The hardest word is goodbye. And yet, I almost think I could say it. I believe I could. And what is the best I can say for myself? It's that I have loved. And I was loved. And all the rest drops away at the end. I'm content. Nancy knew the power of resurrection in her life. You know, today, across the globe, there'll be preachers who get up and talk about today being about eternal life, that Christ opened the gates of heaven to us. And that's true. But that's not why he came. He didn't come to open the gates of heaven. He could have done it from heaven. For Pete's sake, he was God. Hello, come on. You know, he didn't need to come down and share our life with all of its struggles and its pain, its sorrows, rejection, disappointment. He didn't have to come and do that unless he was trying to tell us something more. My sisters and brothers, we, you and I gather to celebrate the resurrection of Christ. And more importantly, to celebrate the power of resurrection in our life. You know, that was one of the things that I loved about Nancy that made my mother's last cousin so special to us all. Because despite the troubles, despite the difficulties, despite the sorrows of her life, she knew the power of resurrection in her life again and again. That power that raised her up in the midst of sorrow, that lifted her up in the midst of disappointment, that enabled us in the face of all of the struggles of life to find a reason to laugh. Because in the end, isn't that what we celebrate today? Sorry, but this is not quite from the homily last night, so it's a little different, but that's okay. I'm going to tell the story anyway, because now I've decided to laugh. I had a, <laughs> my best friend, the fellow I was ordained with, whose name was also David. We made it easy for the bishop to remember who he was ordaining. <laughs> On Good Friday, not long after he was ordained, he was doing the homily. And he started his homily on Good Friday by saying, aren't you glad Jesus was crucified? I mean, really, stop and think about it for a moment. Aren't you glad he was crucified? Can you imagine if they had stoned him to death like they tried to do a couple of times? Instead of making the sign of the cross, we would go, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> And I looked at him and I said, my God, David, what the, are you thinking that you would tell that, you would start a Good Friday homily that way? And he said, well, don't you remember that April Fool's Day is actually Good Friday? That's where we get that practice of telling jokes and doing practical jokes on others on Good Friday because on Good Friday, when everything is quiet, those who listen can hear God laugh.
Because in the end, the devil thought he had won. And God laughed. Because in the end, God knew how the story would unfold. And the big joke was on the evil one. Because in the end, he lost big time. The power of death lost its ability to hurt us. The power of disappointment lost its pain. The power of sorrow was broken. The power of despair was ended. Because Christ rose from the dead and gave to us the power to rise again and again and again. Not just at the end, which is why I love the words of the poet Emily Dickinson who said, I'm not going to heaven when I die. I'm going there all along. That is the message of Easter Sunday, that we won't go there at the end, but rather we rise with him again and again whenever death touches our life, whenever sorrow touches our life, whenever pain touches our life, whenever disease touches our life, whenever despair touches our life. He calls us to rise with him again and again, to find in him the hope and the promise to rise with him. I've known that through most of my life. And thanks to Amos, we have those little reminder bookmarks that there's never a cross without a resurrection. It's about the power of resurrection. And I've known that especially in these last several months of my life as I've gone through chemo to deal with cancer. And in the end, I, I know that that's going to be victorious. But I'll tell you, it takes a lot out of me. <laughs> when I go in for chemo, which is what I'm going to do again tomorrow, hooray, hooray, happy Easter, let's go for chemo. Um, <laughs> You know, the nurse comes in and she hangs this bag on the thing that they're going to infuse me with some sort of medicine that really is a poison. And she puts on a plastic gown over everything that runs to the floor just in case any of it spills on her. <laughs> but they're going to put that in my veins. You know, somehow that's not really anything that I find terribly attractive, and I know the effect it will have, that in the end, it will be exhausting. It's okay. It's okay. Even though there are times that I'm coming over here, and I have to stop twice to catch my breath so I can get all the way into the sacristy, the Lord has always been there to make it possible for me to rise above what's going on, to rise again and again and again. What we celebrate today, my sisters and brothers, is not about how it will end, but how we are called to live as people of the resurrection, of those who know the power of Christ rising from the dead not just once at the end, but again and again, because in the end, we're not going to heaven when we die. We're going there all along. And those who know the power of resurrection know that. In the face of despair and difficulty and disease, in the face of all the struggles of life, that power enables them to rise. Because in the end, death has no power over us. Not now, not then, not ever. Because you and I have been baptized into his death. And we have been baptized into his resurrection. We celebrate that great truth this day. 